now that you have your CV, SOP, uh, you have your GRE and TOEFL score, you have completed your master's program, have arranged for later sub recommendations and uh, transcripts from your uh, BSc and MSc colleges are all set to apply for the US PhD program. A lot of students ask me these questions um, how to apply for a PhD in the US? What are the requirements? Is there any special exam to take? And if it is, then how to prepare for um, the exams? A lot of students who are doing their masters from IIT, IASC, or ISERS, or any other premier institute of India, they already have these informations. They actually get it from their seniors. The seniors go through this process and uh, provide the information to the juniors. But many students also do not have these uh, informations so in this video i am uh, trying to uh, go through these processes step by step hope it will be uh, informative to some of you uh, let's get started with it first thing first you need to have a master's degree to apply for a phd program in the us so many countries like us or china they have a four years bachelor program so um, students there uh, can directly apply for the PhD program uh, once they are get out of their bachelor's program BSc or BA uh, however in India things are different we have a three years um, bachelor's program so to apply for the PhD you need to earn your master's degree also uh, and then you can apply. Um, now, good thing is that you can apply uh, for the PhD program wh while you are still in your master's program. But when ultimately to join the PhD program, you have to have a master's program. Now, while you are um, doing your master's, try to get a good score. Um, good score will get you uh, good recommendation later, and also it will help um, to get a good. Um, CV or curriculum vitae. Now you need some uh, standardized test um, to apply for the PhD in the US. What are tests? Um, these are um, GRE, Graduate Record Examination, um, TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language, uh, and um, Subject GRE. Uh, all the subject GRE is not mandatory in most of the places. In recent years, some of the US universities they do not require you to take um, GRE, but they need um, some kind of English um, test uh, for international students. I will add a uh, link uh, for these exams in the description sections. You can go through uh, them thoroughly. Now, what is a good time to uh, prepare for these exams? Uh, in my opinion, I think um, if you plan to um, apply for your PhD in the US, you should start preparing for this exam from your first semester. For GRE, you have three uh, parts. So quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, and analytical writing. Everything is in English. Uh, now, in my opinion, the quantitative reasoning is the easiest part among these three um, part uh, among these three uh, what do you have to do in quantitative reasoning you have to solve some uh, 10 to 12 uh, grade math problem um, that basically have some algebra arithmetic geometry um, data analysis that kind of stuff uh, you need to understand and interpret quantitative informations you need to solve some problem um, based on uh, mathematical models. So that's quantitative reasoning. Now the hard part is um, the language part um, and you have to understand um, individual words. You have to understand um, uh, sentences or entire text. You have to draw conclusion uh, from some conversations. Uh, you have to identify major and minor points from a text something like that and for that you have to familiarize yourselves with uh, the popular or frequently used words used in the um, u.s academia 
and there are many books um, that you can um, use for these preparations usually you have to uh, familiarize um, 3000 to 5000 words um, and uh, I said familiarize uh, not memorize so if you want to memorize the words you will um, eventually forget so I would recommend try to um, uh, understand the word and try to use the words uh, uh, another advice I have for the GRE aspirant is um, to read uh, a lot of English literature. Um, these not only will help you to um, enjoy the uh, beauty of literature but also will improve your vocabulary. Now same thing goes for um, analytical writing. Uh, for uh, analytical writing you need to write very good quality essay um, in the GRE test. Um, now you have to uh, express clearly and effectively through your writing and uh, one of the advice for um, this would be to um, write something regularly uh, maybe a blog or a Facebook post something like that that will improve your uh, uh, writing skills. Now let's talk about um, TOEFL or ILTS, the English Proficiency Tests. So these exams um, typically uh, has four components, uh, reading, writing, listening and speaking. So the preparation you took uh, for your GRE exam uh, will cover uh, the reading and writing part, but you have to take some special um, preparation for uh, speaking and listening part. For the listening part, they will play you some conversation um, uh, in an academic setting, typically um, conversation between two friends, two students, two colleagues, um, and PhD advisor, and his or her students, stuff like that. And they will ask you some questions based on that conversations. Basically, they will test you whether you understood their conversations or not. Uh, for the speaking part, you, you, um, they will give you some random topic and you need to speak on that topic. Um, they will test your speaking ability, how effectively you can uh, convey your message. Uh, now for um, these two tests, I would recommend um, um, uh, try to speak um, uh, with your uh, fellow aspirants, fellow friends, they are also who are also uh, going to take these exams. Um, so uh, while uh, I was in um, IIT Kanpur and preparing for these exams, uh, we have we used to have a small group and we used to meet uh, regularly after dinner and we'll debate uh, about um, politics, uh, cricket and stuff like that and that immensely helped our uh, speaking ability. Now, uh, subject GRE. Um, uh, so, subject GRE will test your um, proficiency uh, in a subject uh, in which you are uh, aiming to uh, do your uh, PhD. This is similar to NEET or GATE exam that we have in India. So, uh, uh, again, it's not very, um, it's not mandatory in most of the universities. Now, there you have, you have. Uh, GRE, you have TOEFL and uh, you have subject GRE. Now, once you have all these standardized tests, you can uh, apply for the PhD program. Uh, now, one thing I'll tell you, then try to have this course uh, beforehand. Um, uh, try to take the exams, maybe second semester or third semester of your uh, master's degree uh, so that you have the scores ready when you're applying uh, for the PhD programs. Um, so you can tell uh, uh, GRE and TOEFL organizations um, to wh which universities you are applying for so they will uh, send the score, uh, scores um, to those universities. Uh, they'll send um, scores to four universities for free but if you want to apply to uh, more than four you need to pay some fees. Now, CV or curriculum vitae. Uh, you need a CV um, to apply for a PhD program uh, in the US. Uh, if you do not have one, please write one. Um, and I have uh, added a sample CV in the description section so that you can also 
uh, make your own CV. So what goes in the CV? Basically your name, your basic information, your academic details, whether you have got any um, prizes, your achievements, uh, whether you have done any summer project, term papers, stuff like that. Now the research project or summer project is a very important part in your CV. So you have to do some like two to three months um, uh, period of um, uh, research project uh, in a lab. Uh, so this will give you some uh, good exposure to the research environment and you know you'd know how the research is done, done and what is the uh, life of a researcher and how their days look like stuff like that uh, it's very unlikely that you'll um, finish a project and write a paper uh, from your summer project uh, but what you will do you'll um, maybe try to Maybe you'll learn how to operate some machines, uh, try to operate a microscope and you'll learn some um, co basic coding skills. Uh, you'll have some ba basic coding um, skills like MATLAB, Python, stuff like that. Now, um, this will immensely help your future research career. I have seen uh, many uh, students also uh, get their summer project done outside of India, maybe US or Europe and that helped them to get offer from top tier universities in the US for example MIT or Harvard or Caltech. So if you um, get a chance to do um, your summer project from outside that would be awesome uh, but if you don't um, try to do some summer project uh, in India try to write to the professors uh, directly and ask them that you are interested in their work and uh, try to be a project student. Most of the professor will uh, may not reply or they'll reply negatively but some of them will reply and will let, um, let you to uh, do a project in their um, lab so use that opportunity. SOP um, statement of purpose um, another important component uh, in your um, PhD applications. What goes in SOP? It, in these documents, you basically tell them why you were interested uh, to do PhD in that particular university and in that particular department. For example, um, maybe you have uh, done some coursework in material chemistry or computer computational chemistry and you really like that um, topic and you want to explore more and that's why you want to um, pursue um, this PhD research career um, and also you need to tailor your SOP uh, or statement of purpose uh, to each university you are applying for for example if you're applying for University of Colorado Boulder then you need to say them why you chose Colorado Boulder. Maybe you like their atomic and molecular physics program very much or you like the mountain uh, uh, around the universities, stuff like that. And um, also you need to name uh, two, three uh, professors lab in the department where you uh, would like to join once uh, given a chance. And for that, you need to know what kind of research these professors are doing, what kind of uh, problems they're trying to solve, that kind of stuff. So you need to do some groundwork. And if you do, do your groundwork and then your application would be uh, really like pointed to that university and to that, dire uh, to that department and your um, chances of getting an offer from that universities uh, will increase. So you have to send three letters of recommendations um, while you are applying for the PhD program in the US. Who are the professors to approach for um, these recommendation letters? Usually um, these are professors from your MSc program or, um, or the professor you have done your summer project with. Uh, choose your professor well so that they can give you uh, good recommendation letters. Um, uh, choose professor who has really who have really good impressions uh, on you. Maybe you have done good, um, uh, you have done exceptionally good in the course um, they are teaching, um, or um, 
you have done a good job in your summer project or your term paper stuff like that um, once you know that these professors will um, send the recommendation letters for you um, then you put their uh, name and email address and designations um, uh, while you are applying for your uh, um, PhD program and um, US universities will directly contact to this professor asking uh, to submit the recommendation later for you. US universities will also require um, your official transcript uh, from your MSc and BSc college and universities. What are the transcripts? These are uh, official um, academic record from these uh, college and universities. So approach to your BSc and MSc college and um, ask them for the transcript. They might charge you some fees and uh, they'll uh, give you uh, the transcripts uh, in a sealed envelope and then you have to send the transcripts to the US universities you are applying for your PhD program via post. Now that you have your CV, SOP, uh, you have your GRE and TOEFL score, you have completed your master's program and uh, you have arranged for later sub recommendations and uh, transcripts from your uh, BSc and MSc colleges. You're all set to apply for the US PhD program. Based on your GRE and TOEFL score and your overall results in BSc and MSc, you should apply um, to five to six US universities and uh, that's it. Um, good luck for your applications also if you like this video and feel this is informative please uh, do like comment and share and also subscribe to the chan to this channel for uh, more educational videos like this um, bye bye take care